also all flight test crew here at NAB 2015. Be sure to subscribe so you can follow along with all of our visits from the show floor. And right now I'm talking to Randy Brown from DJI. How you doing, Randy? Great to see you again. Seems like every time we catch up with you, you've got something new. And in this case, it's the DJI Phantom 3. Why don't you tell us about it? Five days ago, we released the Phantom 3, uh, which is the next in the line of the you know, very stable, small, consumer uh, quadcopters. Now the Phantom 3 is pretty much a crossover between the Inspire and the Phantom. The Inspire is a little bit larger, it's a little bit more power for high speed. It also has uh, interchangeable cameras. This uh, Phantom 3 is the size of the other Phantoms. You can throw it in your backpack, take it on vacation, that sort of thing. The legs are about a half inch longer because the camera is a little bit larger. This is the Phantom 3 professional one. This is an integrated 4K camera with a very stable three-axis gimbal. Phantom 3 also has visual positioning system. So if you're flying indoors with no GPS satellite like we're doing at this event today, you'll be able to hover over the floor because it's going to pick up a pattern or a texture with this camera on the bottom and a sonar system on the bottom. So it's going to maintain its position indoors. The integrated light bridge system is built into the Inspire, but for the Phantoms previously you had to purchase it extra and it was quite expensive. Now it's integrated into the Phantom system. It's a high definition FPV system that works up to a little over a mile away, which is a huge distance adjustment over the Phantom 2. And so with the uh, light bridge, a lot of people like to use the iPad mini. Now how's the uh, latency? Are you, are you getting that latency trimmed down? It's about a quarter of a second. This is a huge step up for really a zero price jump almost. Now you mentioned this was the 4K version, so do I take from that there are other versions? Yes, we, have, we also released the 1080p version, which is what we call the Phantom 3 Advanced. The 1080p high definition is $999, so it's under $1,000. The camera just doesn't shoot 4K. So then what does the 4K Professional Edition cost? $1,260. I love the lens. It's a equivalent to a 21 millimeter rectilinear lens, meaning there's no more fisheye, no more bubble effect. This makes things a lot easier and faster. Now let me ask you um, just the sort of general multi-rotor guy questions. What's your flying time? How's the flight performance, etc.? Okay, the flying time is about 23 minutes per battery. It's a four cell battery, by the way powers slightly larger motors than the Phantom 2. Also we have ESC braking, which means the motors not only speed up, but they slow down and brake themselves in real time as well. So it flies differently, it has a different feel, much more like flying the Inspire. It also is able to hover above the ground, like three inches off the ground without doing any bobbing up and down. That's tribute to the hard work of our engineers writing more software code. It also has, just like the Inspire, has automatic takeoff, automatic landing. We're using the same exact app today to fly both the Inspire and the Vision. So really this could be a stepping stone for somebody who's interested in moving. When you jump up to the Inspire, it becomes, uh, it's a larger object. You don't want to be sloppy when you're flying that. It's, it's very stable. It's cheaper to make mistakes with this aircraft than it is with the Inspire. Oh, it is, absolutely. <laughs> so the question I'm sure everyone wants to know, when is this going to be available for the general public? A few weeks from now. It won't be a long time. Okay, so I'm here with Doug Bennett from Intelligent UAS. Hello, Doug. Hey, how are you guys doing today? So I hear you've actually flown this, and you, well, what are your thoughts about that? Well, I really enjoyed the Phantom 3 Professional. I didn't get to try the Advance yet, uh, but from what I've seen, uh, automatically the indoor flight is vastly different. You can keep it stable at three meters and it just sits perfectly still, like an air hockey table turned off completely and the helicopter is the puck. It just sits still. Anything above three meters, it'll still give you that attitude mode, but there is a lot of new features to it that make it a really great helicopter. Well, great, and, and besides the optical flow sensor at the bottom, what about the radio itself? Looks a little different to me. Yeah, it's a little different. Uh, similar to the Inspire one, same shape, different color. Uh, most obviously on the back, you got some different ports back here. No HDMI out, but you do have your USB for your Android or your iPad, whatever you have for uh, your monitor here. Um, there is no retract lever for the actual radio because there's no retractable legs, uh, but you do have the return to home button as well as your normal video buttons like record, t uh, tilt your camera, pan, things like that. Obviously pan not on this one. Um, you have your uh, app features on other modes and your shutter and selectable modes on the back as well. 
So how does it respond in the air? Is it like a Phantom 2? What main difference will be indoors, uh, but outdoors it's just the same old Phantom we know and love. So it flies the same, it's going to control the same, it's not going to be anything surprising if you're upgrading from a Phantom 2 or even a 1. But it is very crisp in the controls, a lot less uh, lag in the sticks, things like that, and it's very, very accurate for what it is. Well, thank you, Doug, very much. This is uh, Roswell Flight Test Crew from NAB 2015, signing off.